Welcome to the e-commerce Coffee Break podcast. In this podcast episode, we discuss all things happening in the influencer creator economy. Our featured guest on the show is Andy Cloyd, co-founder and CEO at superfiliate.com. So let's dive into it. This is the e-commerce Coffee Break. A top-rated Shopify growth podcast dedicated to Shopify merchants and business owners looking to grow their online stores. Learn how to survive in the fast-changing e-commerce world with your host, Klaus Lauter, and get marketing advice you can't find on Google. Welcome 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 to to the the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce Coffee Break podcast. Today we want to find out what influencer marketing actually is. So we dive deep into influencer creator economy and what all of this has to do with e-commerce and how you can increase your revenue and grow your business. Joining me on the show today is Andy Cloyd. He is the founder and CEO of superaffiliate.com, an influencer and affiliate platform for Shopify merchants. Prior to starting Superaffiliate with his best friend Anders, Andy spent his entire career as an early stage venture capital investor at Revolutions Rise of the Rest Seed Fund, a DC based firm started by AOL founder Steve Case. So let's welcome him to the show. Hi, Andy. How are you today? Hey, Klaus. I'm doing well. Living the dream. Another beautiful day here in New York. I love New York. Andy, how would you define influencer marketing in 2024 and how has it evolved from its early days? Yeah, I, I think influencer marketing today is, you know, it's becoming this broad category that is a source of so much of an e-commerce um, merchant's business. I think it's it's everything from content to conversions, to awareness, to really like aligning your brand with the right audiences and reaching the groups that, that you want to reach. I think, you know, at its genesis, when we saw, you know, early rise of social platforms, think, you know, your Instagrams and things like that. I think people thought about influencer marketing as like, what are these A-list celebrities doing? What are they talking about? Where are they going? Things like that. And I think over time, as you've seen the ability to create audience trickle down into more unique niches or categories and things like that, you've seen the rise of a different class of creator, which is more of this like mid-market creator that maybe has their, you know, 10 to 100 to 200,000 followers, and they speak to a very specific audience. And I think as that has evolved on the social platforms, that's created a ton of opportunity for brands to think about influencer marketing in a different way. It's not, I need to be able to reach out to LeBron James and get him to talk about my protein supplement. It's, I sell, you know, hydration salts to, for example, something I encountered this week, I sell hydration salts to firefighters who are constantly in intense environments where, you know, it's, it's hot, you're sweating a lot and you need like a really premium product. And that brand's actually been able to scale by leveraging the power of influencers by understanding who's our audience firefighters and people adjacent to that doing extreme activity that require have high electrolyte needs. And then I'm able as a brand to go and find the people who have aggregated that audience and partner with them and, you know, come up with some sort of economic arrangement to get my product in front of the people I'm trying to reach. And I think like, as we've watched this evolve uh, and there's a more familiarity amongst consumers as well as brands, this is becoming like an applicable strategy and a, you know, effective strategy for a much broader group of brands. Um, So it's been a really fun space to watch evolve. And I think, you know, we're only in the early innings of this. And I think we're seeing people get more sophisticated. And I'm sure, you know, we could touch on that a little bit more here in subsequent questions. I think you just opened it on the right foot. So there's this common misconception that you need to have a celebrity um, that's completely vanished. Um, now we're talking about micro influencers, nano influencers, and uh, the example that you just gave is, is mind boggling. I mean, this is as niche as it can get. Um, Walk me through the process, how brands typically engage with influencers or how they find them, because finding a micro-influencer probably is not that easy. Uh, how does that work? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think what this looks like is very dependent on the brand. Different brands of different sizes, scales, things like that, they will approach this channel extremely differently. However, I think like maybe if I'm speaking to more of the like getting started, I really do think that you're know, getting 
getting things off the ground with an influencer program so often revolves around finding those like super niches or those creators that are going to really resonate with a brand. Uh, and I think the ability to like at the early stages use that founder story and founder energy to connect with people who you know have a high affinity or an audience with a high affinity for your brand and your product is super powerful. Uh, when it comes to like finding people, I think there's a couple of questions there. There's finding, hey, how do I find the three or five people to test this out with? And then how do I start to really scale that? And I think we've seen people approach that a lot of different ways. You know, I think commonly and historically people think about, oh, discovering influencers is finding a database with a hundred million people in there, filtering by follower count, demographics, things like that. I think that is a way to do it. But we find that like the brands that are really crushing it here are it's more of a personal approach than that. It's being on the social platforms. It's discovering content that you see as a trained eye of knowing your brand, your audience, and how you want to speak to that audience, finding people that really resonate with that. So I think, you know, we oftentimes seeing it happen very organically. We're very fortunate now that we live in a world of algorithmic feeds, whether it's TikTok, Reels, things like that, where this, you know, algorithm is being trained over time to show us the type of content that we're engaging with. So we see a lot of fantastic influencer marketing managers, founders, CEOs of brands, really leveraging that native on-platform experience to find you know extremely aligned creators and building relationships with them. And there's nothing more powerful than the, hey, I'm the CEO or the founder of this company. I built this product because I saw a problem that I wanted to solve. And I think it's going to resonate with you. And I think in the early days, that personal story and personal touch is an amazing way to kind of catalyze and kickstart these right. efforts. I think over time, as you expand and you build more brand awareness, you then actually start to create a little gravity towards creators and influencers wanting to work with your brand. And then I think the influencer marketing manager role starts to evolve to like relationship building at scale the fielding and filtering actually inbound interest as opposed to needing to send out a thousand messages to maybe get, right. you know, 50 people enrolled. Uh, and I think like, you, you know, so it's kind of this evolving thing over the life cycle of the company. And then I, you know, and I, and I think we'll get into too about how different creators and different influencer partnerships can serve different objectives within your business. Um, but I think, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. I'm sure a little later. Yeah. When talking about maybe mistakes that a lot of companies did in the past, maybe still do, is how to work with a creator, with an influencer. Uh, because as you said, it's a partnership. And I think a lot of, in the beginning, they were just putting money out and do whatever you want. But you need to give the, the creator, the influencer, the right tools. That's where you come in with Super Affiliate. Talk me a little bit on how do you make a influencer happy with the partnership? What do you yeah. need to provide from your side? I mean, I think... Partnering with an influencer is the same as any other partnership. I think it's all coming down to like alignment of incentives. Um, and I think it is a very personal thing. It's a relationship-based channel. It's not like Meta where I can just dump $50,000 in and get you know X multiple, hopefully, of that out. So I think where I see like influencer partnerships going wrong, I'll start there, is like a misalignment of incentives or expectations. So I'm a brand, I'm getting started. You know, I want influencer to be 20% of my revenue because I heard that that's what Athletic Greens does. So then I go out there and I just partner with a couple of people. I give them an affiliate link and say, post this out there and hopefully it works. I think when people go into it, thinking about this as like the saving grace channel right out of the gate, it's just not that. It is, you have to think about how are we measuring success? How are we defining success? And then, you know, talking very transparently with the creator to understand that. So some brands might say, we're strictly thinking about brand awareness. So we're going to use, you know, a gifting strategy to get product into a bunch of people's hands, generate a bunch of posts and get a bunch of eyeballs to now know that, you know, XYZ company exists. I think other brands might say, hey, we're super early in this and actually paid ads is going to be the revenue driver of our business for the next 12 months. So what we would love is extremely curated content that is going to say that we think will perform well on meta. 
that's going to require a very different instruction set and capability and enablement of not just you as the brand to provide to the creator, but also that creator understanding what their core competency is and how they like to create content. So I think like, and then as you think about these different parts of the funnel that influencer can impact, I think it's being very eyes wide open about what objectives you have with a campaign and where you're at in that life cycle. I think over time, you'll see brands that really win are figuring out a lot of the stuff that really works down there, you know, early in the days, less scalably, figuring out who do we, who should we partner with? How do we expand into new categories, niches, et cetera? And then once you start to understand that, I think that's when you can really start to move this more towards like a revenue generating bottom of funnel affiliate strategy where we know who we resonate with. We know what type of influencers like our product. We know what type of people can speak very authentically about our product. Now let's try to scale that and reach, you know, tens, hundreds, thousands of those type of people, and then give them the tools that they need to ultimately convert their audience. Obviously the economic relationship can be different there as well. Um, right. You know, we see brands in terms of another way where I see things kind of go wrong. I think a lot of people go into affiliate and they say, Hey, like we want to offer, you know, $5 per order, 10% commission or whatever. And it's a $60 AOV product. And, you know, so, okay, 10% commission, $6 per sale. I don't think an influencer is getting out of bed to make $6 per sale. But for some reason, there's this cognitive dissonance where I'm going to go to Meta and spend $80 to acquire that same customer or maybe even a less valuable customer, depending on how you understand your cohorts and things like that. So I think what we are always thinking about and seeing brands succeed with is how do I think about a channel where I can align incentives with this creator? And if my CAC on Meta is 80 bucks, then maybe I'll pay $50 to this creator per customer mm -hmm. that they convert. And then that creator starts to do some math and say, okay, like at $6, I convert hundred people. I make 600 bucks. Great. At $50, I convert 100 people. I make $5,000. That's starting to sound a little more meaningful. So I think there is this just like real alignment of incentives and showing creators a path to actually having an economic impact on their own lives. Because for many people, this is either a primary or extremely meaningful supplementary income source. And you just have to align your incentives with that. So um, that's a little bit of high level in terms of structure, timeline, stuff like that. Yeah, I think you uh, spoke there completely out of my heart. I mean, it's like getting affiliate offers. I mean, they come in every day in my inbox and sometimes it's, it's just laughable. I was like, yeah, this is like $3 for a lead or something like that. This is literally right. not worth it. I'll start um, passing you the good ones that are ready to pay. Uh, we'll, we'll, get, <laughs> we'll get those in front of you. And then you'll talk about them and you'll, and you'll make them some money. And that's how a strategy works, you know? Exactly. That's that's it in a nutshell. Now, when it comes, um, you're a brand, an e-commerce brand, and you're looking at influencers. And I think there was a couple of weeks ago in the news that um, I think, I'm sure the, the head of Instagram or whoever it was said the follower numbers do not count. Mm -hmm. So how do you make sure that you sort of find out if this influencer is real, if he has the reach, yeah. if he has the audience. I think that's a very crucial um, topic for a lot of brands to decide if they want to work with an influencer or not. A hundred percent. And I think this is also a very important time to think about the objectives of what you're trying to do. So you know, if it's a UGC creator that's just making great paid ad content, I actually don't really care about their engagement. I care about the quality of the content they're creating. However, I think where this becomes more relevant is starting to think about more of this performance focused or awareness focused influencer partnerships. And I think when it comes to that, that is ultimately going to be a research game. You know, it's going to understand there. And, you know, we've got tools and things like this internally, um, and there's tons of stuff out there, but really understanding things like engagement rate. What is actually the sentiment of these comments? Is it a thousand people commenting? Great. That's probably a little fishy. Whereas if you see people actually engaging and saying, oh, my gosh, this product changed my life or, you know, I, I absolutely love this. This is how I use it or whatever. You can really start to see that authenticity. And then I think as you start to deepen these relationships, you can start to ask for some more from these creator partners. It's, you know, things like story views. It's looking at some of these hard metrics to understand, is this a real audience? 
are the people that are engaging with this pe- with this person who I want to be engaging with this person. But ultimately, you know, this is where our partners at our customers do an excellent job of they really start to understand and spend a lot of time and effort, you know, figuring out, hey, you know, is this a legitimate creator? Is this follower account 90% true or is it 10% true? And really spending time with that. And then I think the other thing that I'll talk about in that is that is really, you know, in, if your strategy is to go and do a thousand one-off deals, it's going to be hard one to vet all those and make sure that they're right. people, but it's also going to like reduce that incentive to do that work up front and make sure that this is a genuine relationship. And so what we see happening is a lot of our brands and customers are actually taking budget and saying, Hey, you know, maybe we're going to partner with a hundred people this month, but all of those people are going to be multi-post or multi-month deals where we're incentivizing them in the longer term. And then I think when you're saying us as brand are willing to commit to this relationship a little more upfront, then that allows one, you're going to do a little more homework in terms of creating, you know, understanding the authenticity and engagement of this creator, but also that creator is going to say I'm not going to be able to hide because after the first one, they're going to see, oh, crap, 10% of my audience is real. The results aren't going to be there. And then, you know, these subsequent two and three posts are probably the brand is going to say these aren't going to perform and they might, you know, try to renegotiate or something like that. So I think like if you come in with that long term view of the relationship and the partnership, I think that drastically increases your chance of success because you're going to do your homework on the front end because there's a little more incentive to do so. Mm -hmm. Now, let's dive a little bit more in technology. So Super Affiliate, you are providing a platform to make the life easier for everyone involved in the game of influencer marketing. Talk me through it. Yeah. What kind of um, features do you have? What kind of benefits can I use out of the box? Just Absolutely. talk about it. Yeah. And, and, you know, as with any product, it's been really an incredible arc to see. But I think, you know, where we are today as a company is we're the platform that allows a brand to run all of what we call their word of mouth platforms. That could be everything from a customer referral program to ambassadors, to influencers, to affiliates. So you think about, there's a traditional feature set that I think an average user would come to expect that of course we provide, you know, everything from application forms and application reviews, link and code generation and tracking deeply integrated into Shopify, payments on various commission structures, CPA here, commission payments there, store credit over here, you know, things like that. But then you start to think about what are those other workflows that our user might need to execute on a successful program? So now the pro product has really expanded into social content collection. So we're integrating first party into Instagram and TikTok, pulling all that content that you're being tagged in to help you better understand like, Who's talking about us online? Some of that might be intentional. We've partnered with this influencer. Some of it might be passive. You know, when you're a bigger brand, you might you know wake up one day and somebody posted a story about you that has 50,000 followers and they nat natively tagged your content and you might miss it if you don't have a tool like Superfiliate that's sitting there collecting that information, collecting that content. And then of course, giving you the option to you know engage with that creator to maybe repurpose that content for paid ads or maybe deepen a partnership. So with that, we have our Instagram um, DMs integration where a brand manager, an influencer manager, a social media manager can actually be talking to these creators inside our platform and then enrolling people in other high value ad workflows like product seeding and gifting programs. How do we get product into people's hands in a scalable, low effort way for the influencer marketing manager? So, you know, we have a very easy system where you can invite a creator, they can choose what product they want based on what you've offered them. And then we'll automatically push those orders through to Shopify for fulfillment, of course, free, free shipping, things like that, depending on what a brand wants to do. Then I think you start to think about, you know, where are other places that you can take this? So now we're starting to think very multi-channel. You know, I'm a brand, I have a D2C site, but there are also other channels that I'm activating and selling through. TikTok shop, obviously a huge conversation these days. We have a very native TikTok shop integration where you as a brand can come in, you can access the creator marketplace, filter based on who you want to work with create a list and then mass outbound and invite them to a collaboration to enroll them in a TikTok shop campaign, managing all of that from our platform. 
Amazon, another you know marketplace that's very critical for larger brands. Um, you know, there's a lot of affiliate and influencer activity that's driving traffic to Amazon. So now we as a platform are becoming a place that you're not just thinking about your Shopify store, you're thinking about your entire e-commerce business and all the channels you might be selling in and allowing you to manage all of that from a single pane of glass inside Superfiliate. Um, we've got some other really exciting stuff coming, but I'll save that for our, our next episode. And, and if people uh, follow along the journey on LinkedIn or something, they might see a thing or two about it. What I understand and what I like is that you really put together a lot of tools that in the past were separate tools and not talking to each other and there were no workflows. And now you have really a all-in-one platform to manage all this process. Who is the, the typical user within a organization um, yeah. using your tool? It's really a fantastic question. And it's something that you know has evolved over time. And also evolves with the stage and sophistication of a customer. So, you know, I think for, let's say you're a smaller brand, let's say sub couple million dollars a year of revenue. I think one of the really huge benefits of Superfiliate in that instance is exactly what you just mentioned. It's the ability to turn on all of these programs from one place. So you've got your customer referral program and maybe some loyalty elements, some ambassadors, some influencers, some affiliates, but you're just starting to dabble and you don't have a head count across all of those. Super affiliate there, we're often our user is, you know, typically going to be either a CEO or a founder, um, a head of e-commerce, a head of marketing, if there is just a broader marketing person, or sometimes like a retention manager, somebody who's really just managing all these marketing channels. However, as brands get a little larger, Superfiliate actually becomes this really incredible collaboration platform for several roles and personas across you know, an organization. So you know, we're becoming a place where you know, the social media manager might be managing that social content ingestion and understanding who's talking about us and what's that engagement look like while they're also putting out branded content. An influencer manager, that is our core, core user today. This is the person that's talking to influencers, you know, negotiating with influencers, getting them product, making use of content, getting people paid, all of that. Sometimes that will be in a broader partnerships manager role that's maybe doing more traditional affiliate marketing through the platform, as well as influencer, as well as now even podcast advertising, things like that. People are running mm -hmm. all those programs inside Superfiliate in kind of bespoke little ways um, that they can do that. And then I think over time, you start to think about there's even other parts of the org that are actually very tightly related to what an influencer or partnerships manager is doing. And that's like a paid media team. So, you know, what creators do we have whitelisting access for? Where is that paid media budget going on the paid ad side to then inform an influencer manager on where should I spend my time? What are the most high value relationships across, okay, affiliate revenue here, but what about what's feeding my paid ads engine? So over time, we're really starting to see Superfiliate become a collaboration platform. And we're real, we've mm -hmm. been, you know, for the last few months, really investing in the reporting and insights side of that to where all these users are able to kind of cross-functionally understand the impact of these programs on their broader business to then allocate budget accordingly when you start thinking about next quarter or next year. You're able to come into Superfiliate and really understand where's the core value drivers inside my personal business on these strategies. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a super cool, fun platform to work with. I'm doing digital marketing for, I'm a dinosaur, I'm doing this for 25 years, but this is a platform that for me sounds like really fun. What I like is really that you also have the monitoring and tracking of the content there, because I think that's where a lot of people miss out, that they do not really know what has been posted about their brand because they were not tagged. So I think this is a very strong feature. Now you also have Beside of the Shopify integrations, you have other integrations. Uh, what integrations, APIs yeah. do you all offer? Of course. So, you know, if, of course, we've got our Shopify integration. Now we've got TikTok shop, we've got Amazon, we've got Instagram, uh, TikTok, you know, more native platform, but then also all your traditional e-commerce tools that a brand might be using. So Klaviyo, SendLane, Attentive, PostScript, all these email and SMS tools, all of your subscription providers, 
you've got you know everything from payments integrations as well. So your existing PayPal account, we also have an, an internal payments tool as well. So really like our goal is to make sure the super affiliate is everywhere within your org. So we're constantly passing data back and forth between these tools, also allowing brands to use the automations that those tools enable. So thinking about how does this program fit into my you know, SMS and email strategy and making that super easy um, over time. And so, I, you know, really making sure we're embedded in this entire stack and um, making sure that a brand can think about our platform holistically as a part of the broader strategy and not just a bespoke tool that they're in isolation. We also do have like, uh, you know, a private API for brands that are maybe a little more sophisticated and want to ingest data into other places, BI tools, stuff like that. Uh, we facilitate that as well. Okay. Now we have a lot of moving parts now. Walk me through the typical onboarding process for a new user. What yeah. steps are involved? How long does it take before I can get up and running? Yeah, this is one of my favorite parts of our company because we've built a truly incredible customer success team that, you know, frankly, makes sure that everybody onboarding onto our platform has, you know, a very white glove experience. So we're a simple Shopify app installation, you know, call it sub five minutes to get the app installed, integrate your tools, integrate your socials. From there, content's flowing. Everything is going, you know, data's flowing. We're good to go. We have a quick onboarding questionnaire to just understand the brand a little better and help us kind of inform some of the stuff that we're going to do. Then our team will come in and really, you know, do a lot of work in this setup and integration. So getting on an onboarding call if people want it, helping design programs, designing beautiful assets, you know, creator-facing portals, customer-facing portals, things like that even as far as in some instances, some email and SMS templates to help people succeed. Oh, really? Then okay. we have some larger, more curated strategies for uh, brands that are really leaning into the channels. We have a creator success team as well that is kind of subsequent to our merchant success team. So that's a part of onboarding where we're sitting down with a merchant. We're going through, what are you doing today? What do you need to be doing? Here's some KPIs and some ideas that we'd be thinking about because ultimately we found that, you know, if we don't have an educated user or an engaged user, that is not going to be a successful relationship. So we really spend a lot of time and effort in that first two, you know, call it week, month, getting people not just onboarded, but set up for success. So, you know, to summarize that real quick, onboarding and installation tool integration, sub five minutes. Uh, we all get most customers launched within a week and they're ready to rock from there. Okay. Yeah, I love that you really dive deep in and take people by the hand because not everyone might be a professional when it comes to influencer marketing, um, how to deal with content creators and then having someone on your side like you guys um, really helping them and coaching them through the process really helpful. Um, is there any kind of homework that someone needs to do before they can st get started? I, I don't think homework, but however, I will say, you know, one thing that and I think you just touched on it there is education and customer education is so important for us, particularly in a category that's evolving this quick. So we are actually launching an influencer marketing field guide um, where we have interviewed 30 of the best influencer marketing managers across hours of video and written content, everybody from Athletic Greens to AG1 to, I mean, Athletic Greens to Tonal to, you know, Mary Ruth's Organics and all these huge companies that are really crushing it in this category. And we're just bringing their insights and strategies to the masses. So we'll be releasing that, you know, I guess it's October 10th right now. That'll come out on the 16th. And then that's going to be an evergreen piece of content though. So we already have our first mini field guide coming shortly after that. That's going to be all about TikTok shop. And that's going to be the top agencies, TikTok shop marketers sitting down on video as well as accompanying written content and saying, this is how we do it. It's not saying that that's exactly how you should do it, but here's some inspiration from people who are tried and true and tested. So um, I think people going there and starting to build their familiarity with you know what to expect, what like it might take to succeed is going to be an amazing resource for people. And that's going to live on our site, superaffiliate.com. And people are going to be able to access that you know at any time. So we're super excited about that. Okay, I will definitely check it out because I'm on the hunt for information about TikTok shop for quite some time. So that works, works well for me. How does your pricing structure work? Yeah, so we, we have a, a small subscription fee plus a usage fee that's a success fee for like the revenue that's coming through our platform. We've structured it that way because we want to have an approachable entry point so a brand's not mm -hmm. making a huge upfront commitment. But then they're also able to like, we can kind of partner in the upside and the success of the program. So, um, you know, we have like, entry level fee, 
and then scale up as brands grow. Um, but over time, you know, typically we're able to come in and say, you're using these three tools today. Let's consolidate those to one. We're going to save you some money. And then from there, all of our incentives are aligned for success. So, um, and that always includes that white glove onboarding 21 day free trial. Um, and it's really an opportunity for someone to come in and say, is this going to work for me? And then from there, you, you know, we're, that's not the end of their interaction with us. We're really leaning in and making these people successful throughout the customer journey. Okay. Before we come to the end of the coffee break today, uh, is there anything that you want to share with our listeners that we haven't covered yet? No, I, I mean, I think for us, it's like, this is, going to be an increasingly important channel for any brand, whether it's content, revenue, uh, top of funnel, brand awareness, things like that. I think like time to start is now. You know, we're always happy to help folks figure it out. I think there's tons of great agency partners and people who really understand this category. But I do think, you know, it's not a flip it on next month. And now all of a sudden we're making tons of money. You do need to start thinking about the channel, testing, strategizing and things like that. So um, my recommendation is really just get started, dip a toe in, um, you know, whether that's with a platform like us or even much more bespoke, but it is just, you know, kickstart it, get it going, and then find somebody to help you scale if you need. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I think with a platform like yours, um, things become much, much easier and people might be just more motivated. I always had a feeling like years ago that in, uh, influencer marketing was sort of a bit of a rocky road for everyone involved. Um, but with a platform that you offer now, I think this is a very smooth and I think also a very fun process to work on that one. Where can people go to and find out more about you guys? Yeah, so you can check out our website. It's just superfiliate.com, S-U-P-E-R-F-I-L-I-A-T-E.com. Or you can follow us, you know, any of our brand accounts or our personal accounts on LinkedIn. I'm always talking about the creator economy on there and I'm always happy to have people along for the ride. Cool. I will put in, we'll put the links in the show notes as always, then you're just one click away. Andy, thanks so much for your time. I think you gave a, a bit of a uh, golden nugget away here on how influencer works. It was a bit of a masterclass in a nutshell. Uh, I think there's so much more. Uh, maybe we'll talk in the, in the future again and um, just give a little bit more information about this topic. I will thanks so much for your time. <laughs> Thank thanks you so much so for much. your time today. Everything will be different. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank you.